Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions asking how to add spatialization to soundscape colors within a soundscape palette. And when I had released my original video on soundscapes, I had mentioned that this was possible. However, I realized that I didn't actually show you guys how to do that. So while this video is long overdue, that is what we're going to be diving into today. Now, I do wanna preface this video by saying, I'm going to assume that if you're looking for information on how to spatialize your soundscape, that you already have your soundscape created. And so we will not be building a soundscape from scratch in this video. So if you'd like to learn how to get started with building soundscapes, check out the card that just popped up in the top right hand corner, watch that video, and then you can come back to this one. So with that being said, let's get started with adding spatialization to soundscape colors. So as you can see, I already have a scene set up here. Uh, it's nighttime, we're in the woods, and it's raining. And as I mentioned, I do already have the soundscape, for the most part, set up. So I've got some wind, some rain, some crickets, cicadas, uh, some owls, and some thunder. And I'll just let you guys hear what that sounds like. So you can hear all of those different elements. The problem is, it sounds like no matter where we move, everything is right on top of you. And for some things, that is completely okay. So like our wind, our rain, the crickets, the cicadas, that's our ambience bed. So that's fine if we hear those in essentially 2D but our owls and our thunder, we do want to be spatialized. And if we come down here and we turn on our 3D visualizer for our sounds, you can see that these sounds are getting called in a specific location. So now we need to figure out a way to essentially harness that location. Now, as I mentioned, I do already have all that set up. So I've got all of my different colors and the cicadas, the crickets, the rain and the wind are fine the way they are. But we need to add spatialization to these three. And so you may think that that is something that is handled in the actual soundscape color, but it's not. So if we open up the soundscape color for our thunder, uh, you can see that we have the meta sound, and then we have a bunch of details that are basically provisioning the spawn conditions. And as we scroll through here, you'll see that attenuation is not listed anywhere. And that's because it's actually housed on the meta sound itself. So if we go into our meta sound, here's what I have set up specifically for the thunder. And if we click on source up here at the top and we scroll down, you will see a section for attenuation. And this is the exact same way that you would attenuate just any normal meta sound as well. So I can click on this and create a new sound attenuation. We'll go into my audio folder and make a new folder for attenuations. And I can call this ATT underscore thunder. And you can open this up and play around with the settings. I'm gonna leave them by default um, just for this example, but you will want to actually dial those in for your project. But the reason that we're setting this in the meta sound is because the soundscape color is essentially just parameter presets for the spawn conditions. If we want to spawn the attenuation, that has to be on the meta sound that we're spawning. And we can do the exact same thing for our owls. We'll have to open up the owl meta sound and we can create another attenuation. Call this ATT underscore owls. And because I'm using default settings, technically I could have just used the thunder, but you know, I wanna show you that there is a difference. And 
that was specifically for the owl hoot. And now we want to do the same thing for the owl twitters. Now, because they both the owl hoots and twitters are the same bird, we can use the same attenuation here. So I'm just going to use the one that I already made and close that out. And I'll go ahead and save those. And so now, if I hit play again, we still have the wind, rain, cicadas, and crickets all as a 2D sound. But now we're getting that spatialization of the thunder and the owls. And I'll be quiet for a second and just kind of let you guys take this in. And so now that we have that spatialization of very specific elements mixed with the 2D ambience beds all within the same soundscape, this is going to make your area just that much more engaging to the player and immersive. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap things up on this video for adding spatialization to soundscape colors. If you like what you saw and you'd like to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you never miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guide Discord server, you will find a link in the description below. Until next time.